This is Bennett, also known as Jeremiah. Today we're going to do the nature of roots in hyperbola. We're going to do the type of question that says, for which values of k will this equation have one positive root and one negative root? We dealt with part one on the parabola. I would encourage you to watch that video. That video is found at the end of this video. It is also found right here on the top right of the screen at the suggested video. If you're interested, in more similar questions. The playlist is also found at the end of this video. So, let's begin. All right, here is the first question. So we're given the hyperbola f at x, which is equals to four over x plus one plus one. And you're also given an equation of a straight line, which is y is equals to x. And in the hyperbola, we have got the y-intercept of five and the x-intercept of negative five. And the y-intercept of the line y is equals to x is zero. So it passes through the origin and you're asked for which values of k will this equation have two roots with the same signs let me give you an understanding of roots then we'll get back to the question the real definition of roots is that roots are your x intercept but when we're talking about a comparison of two graphs it's best to look at it differently which i'm about to show you Sometimes you're given a situation where they ask you about roots and they give you this equation. Now notice that f is the hyperbola and g is the straight line graph. So in this particular situation, we're comparing two graphs. Whenever you have a situation where you're comparing two graphs, it's best to think of the roots as the point of intersection of the two graphs. You will never go wrong if you think of the roots as the point of intersection of the two graphs. So now in this particular situation, notice that there are two roots. One of them is negative because its x value is negative and the other one is positive because it has a positive x value. Let me show you another situation. Now notice that in this particular situation, we have two roots still, but one of them is zero and the other one is negative. All right, here is another situation. Now notice the point of intersection. This time the points of intersection are both negative. So this time we've got two negative roots or two roots that are having the same signs. All right, let me just show you one more situation before we go to the actual question. Here is one more situation. Notice the point of intersection. They are both positive this time because they are both on the positive side of the x-axis. So we have got two positive roots or two roots that are the same signs. So given that understanding, let's get back to the question. So now notice that they said the equation f at x equals to x plus k must have two roots that are of the same signs. Every time you ask this type of questions, your attention must be on the y-intercept of both graphs. Now notice that the y-intercept of the straight line graph is 0 and the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 5. So, in this particular situation, the first thing you'll do is you'll need to find out how many steps are needed for the y-intercept of the straight line graph to meet with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. Notice that it has to shift 5 units so that it can meet with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So now before I shift the graph, notice that we have got two roots. One of them is negative and the other one is positive. Now we have already agreed that for the y value of the straight line graph to meet the y value of the hyperbola, it has to shift 5 units upwards. Now notice what will happen if I shift this graph 5 units upwards. If I shift it 5 units upwards, one of the roots is now 0 and the other one is negative. So basically we've got one zero root and one negative root. Now notice what will happen if I shift it greater than 5 units upwards. If I shift it greater than 5 units upwards, we now have two roots that are of the same sign because this one is negative and this one is also negative. So we've got two negative roots. So notice there are three situations. The first situation is when the y-intercept of the straight line graph is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. The second situation is when the y-intercept of the straight line graph is the same as the y-intercept of the hyperbola. The third situation is when the y-intercept of the straight line graph is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So each of these three situations have got different characteristics. For instance, let's talk about the first situation where it's below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So in this particular situation, whenever it is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we have got 
two roots that are of different signs. One is positive and the other one is negative. So that is the first situation. The second situation is when it is equals to the y-intercept of the hyperbola. And whenever we make it equals to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it now has one zero root and one negative root. So that is the second situation. The third situation is when it is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola. When it is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we now have two roots that are of the same signs because both of them are negative. So, looking at the question, since the question says it has to be of the same signs, it means it must be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So, for it to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has to shift more than 5 units upwards. So, the shift must be greater than 5. Now, when you look at this part of the equation, notice that this is the hyperbola and this is simply the straight line graph. It's just that there is a k added. And notice that k just represents the vertical shift of that straight line graph. And we have already agreed that it has to shift more than 5 units upwards. So you will simply take this and you will say more than 5 units upwards. If it was negative k, you would take negative k and you will say greater than 5. And from here you would have to solve. And we know that when we divide both sides by negative, the sign of the inequality will change. So then it will end up being k is less than negative 5. But in this particular case, k is positive. So we'll just take what is there and we'll say greater than 5. And this is our answer. Just before we attempt a completely different question, let's attempt two more questions on this hyperbola. So you're given the same hyperbola g at x and you're given a straight line graph y is equal to x plus 2. And you're asked, for which values of k? Will the equation g at x equals to x plus 2 plus k have one zero root and one negative root? So, all you have to find out is how many units must the straight line graph shift so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph meets with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So, notice that the y-intercept of the straight line graph is 2 and the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 5. So, it has to shift 3 units upwards so that it can meet with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. The question says it must have one zero root and one positive root. So we have to find out which of the three situations it is. We have to find out whether it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola or equals to the y-intercept of the hyperbola or below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. Again, if it is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has got two roots that are of the same signs. And if it is equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has one zero root and one negative root. And if it is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has got one positive root and one negative root. We want it to have one zero root and one negative root. So it has to be equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So it means that our steps must be equal to three units. If it had to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we would say our steps must be greater than 3 units. If it had to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we would say our steps must be less than 3 units. But because it has to be equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we would say our steps must be equal to 3 units. So, k just represents your shift. So you take exactly what you see there with the sign because it's positive, we'll take positive k and we'll equate it to the shift. So this just means that k is equals to 3. And there we have it. This is our answer. Just before I continue, if you want to be treated whether it is online or physically, whether it is the situation where you're struggling in math or whether it is the situation where you're good in math but want perfection, Take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEB, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you are doing no matter which country you are at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week. We also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. Alright, let's deal with one more before we go to another situation. We are given the equation of g and you are given the equation of a straight line graph y is equals to x minus 2 and you are asked for which values of k will the equation g at x is equals to x minus 2 plus k have two roots 
one positive and one negative. So first of all, we have to find out how many steps must the straight line graph shift so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph meets with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So the y-intercept of the straight line graph is negative 2 and the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 5. So it has to shift 7 units upwards so that it can meet with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So we have to find out whether it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola or equals to the y-intercept of the hyperbola or below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. If it is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it will have two roots that are of the same size. If it is equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it will have one zero root and one negative root. And if it is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it will have two roots, one positive and one negative. So in this situation, because it must have two roots, one positive and one negative, it has to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So, because it has to be below, you will say the steps must be less than 7 units. If it was equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, you will say the steps must be equal to 7 units. If it was above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, you would say the steps must be greater than 7 units. So, in this case, because it has to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, you will say the steps must be less than 7 units. So, you take exactly what you see there and you make it less than 7 units. Alright, here is another question. Just before we attempt this question, if you are interested in knowing the prices of the tutorials, the video that contains the prices and the updated contact details just in case these ones have changed, is found at the end of this video. So, you are given a hyperbola and you are given the straight line with the equation y is equals to negative x. So the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 4 and the y-intercept of the straight line graph is 0. And you're asked, for which values of k will the equation f at x is equals to negative x plus k have two positive roots? So when they ask for two positive roots, it means that they must be the same signs. So first of all, we have to find out how many steps must it shift so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph must be the same as the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So the y-intercept of the straight line graph is 0 and the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 4. So it means it has to shift 4 units upwards so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph can be the same as the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So let's find out whether it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola or equals to the y-intercept of the hyperbola or below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. If it is above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has got two roots. Notice both of them are positive this time. By the way, using a ruler in the exam and pretending that it is a straight line graph will help you see the roots clearly. So, by shifting your ruler in each situation and looking at the points of intersection, you'll know whether both roots are positive or whether both of them are negative or whether we've got one zero root and one positive root or whether we've got one zero root and one negative root or whether we've got two roots that are of different signs. So, according to this situation, whenever it is above the y-intercept, it has got two positive roots. If it is equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it now has one zero root and one positive root. If it is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, it has got two roots that are of different signs. One is negative and the other one is positive. So because the question says it has to have two positive roots, it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So because it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola, your steps will be greater than 4. You will take exactly what you see and you will say k is greater than 4. So here is our answer. k must be greater than 4 units. Alright, here is another question. You are given the same equation of the hyperbola and you are given the straight line y is equals to negative x minus 2. And you are asked, for which values of k will the equation f at x is equals to negative x minus 2 plus k have one zero root and one positive root? So, first we have to find out how many steps must the straight line graph shift so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph meets with the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So the y-intercept of the straight line graph is negative 2 and the y-intercept of the hyperbola is 4. So it means that it has to shift 6 units upwards so that the y-intercept of the straight line graph can be the same as the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So we have to find out whether it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola. 
or whether it has to be equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, or whether it has to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So because the question says that it must have one zero root and one positive root, it has to be equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola. Because when it is equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we now have one zero root and one positive root. So you take exactly what you see here and you equate it to six. So this is our answer. Let's deal with the last question. All right, here is another question. So, the question is exactly the same except that they ask for the values of k such that this equation will have two roots that are of different signs. One negative and the other one positive. So, we have to find out whether it has to be above the y-intercept of the hyperbola or whether it has to be equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola or whether it has to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. If it is above, it has got two roots that are the same signs, both of them are positive. If it is equal to the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we have one zero root and one positive root. If it is below the y-intercept of the hyperbola, we have one negative root and one positive root. So, because the question says they have to have different signs, it has to be below the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So, it means our steps must be less than six. So you take exactly what you see here and you make it less than 6 units because it has to be less than 6 units. So because it was negative, we had to take exactly what it was and we had to make it less than 6. Now because it's negative, we have to divide both sides by negative and the sign of the inequality will change. And this will give us k is greater than negative 6. So this is our final answer. There we have it. All right, we have reached the end of this video. I have included a playlist of similar type of questions. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Any questions you've got or any video you want me to create, please comment below. See you in the next video.